Hi, this is a lecture on accuracy and precision. It accompanies the, uh, the lecture for August uh, 30th and 31st, 2018, uh, and it goes with the PowerPoint Ross PDP days 2 to 3. It's towards the end of the PowerPoint. Okay, so we've already talked about significant digits and how they communicate precision. Um, but we need to talk about what precision actually is. And in science, we have two, uh, two terms, accuracy and precision, that describe kind of how good our measurements are. Um, so measurements can be described based on their accuracy and their precision. Accuracy is how close a measurement is to the true value. Um, inaccurate measurements are caused by an uncalibrated instrument. So I should go back one. Uh, if we were, in this example here, if we were measuring the length of that line, that would be inaccurate if we were to read off 19 centimeters because we're not starting on the 0 centimeter mark on the left. So we didn't calibrate against our ruler. We're going to get, we're going to be off by about 3 centimeters. It's inaccurate. Precision is how close a series of measurements are to each other. Um, and that's for a series of measurements. For a single measurement, or the average of measurement, uh, more significant digits indicates higher precision. So for multiple measurements, it's how, how repeatable something is and how close the measurements are upon repeat. Um, more sig figs is more precision for a single measurement. So uh, which of these two rulers is more precise, this top ruler or this bottom ruler? Take a minute to think about that. Pause the video if you want. Well, the top ruler is going to be definitely more precise because it can measure to, uh, to more significant digits. It has uh, more tick marks that are to smaller and smaller uh, increments, which means it can measure to more and more digits. It is more precise than our bottom ruler. Uh, so significant figures indicate precision. Uh, here we have a representation of some a fluid in a graduated cylinder. How do we record this measurement? Well, if you remember from chemistry, when we record the uh, when we record the uh, the height from a graduated cylinder, we look at the bottom of the of the fluid, the meniscus, and it is at twenty. Four. Now, whenever we're recording any measurement, uh, we're going to read off all of the values that we, that we know, and then we're going to estimate one additional digit. So we know that this is at 24, and we can see it's closest to the 24 tick mark. But we're also going to add another digit of estimation. Um, and because this water is pretty much exactly on 24, that next digit is going to be a zero. So we would write that down as 24.0 milliliters. 24. Um, and yeah, 24, and then we add an additional decimal place for estimation. Uh, how many sig figs do we have in our measurement? We have three significant digits. We are precise to the tenth of a millimeter in our measurement. Three sig figs. How many decimal places should re we record in this measurement from the electronic balance? And it reads the mass of uh, reads the mass of this fluid in the container in the beaker. It reads ninety five point eight five grams. Well, here's the thing: we we can't estimate an additional digit because this is an electronic instrument. It's already doing the estimations for us. We have to write it down as 95.85 grams. That's it. And it is one, two, three, four significant digits. Significant figures do matter. Um, the number of digits we record directly tells others about the level of precision uh, for when we took the measurements. Uh, another way of talking about that is the tolerance of our measurements, how far off our measurements can be. The question posed is, what could happen if we reported a measurement with incorrect significant figures to an engineering company? That actually happened. I believe this is in, is it China or Kenya? 
well, one of those two countries, uh, significant digits were off, and when the bridge was constructed, uh, it did not, the middle piece did not fit, and uh, so it collapsed. So we can also talk about uh, some examples of accurate and precision series of measurements. Here we have three measurements for the weight of, or for the mass of this beaker. The true mass is 95.85 grams. Here we have three readings, 41.9 grams, 45 grams, and 43 grams. Now these are inaccurate measurements because they are not close to the true value. So that's low accuracy. Uh, and uh, trials two and trial three, our measurements, actually all of our measurements, would be improperly read if we were using this same instrument because we're only writing down two sig figs. And our measurements are not consistent with one another. There's a wide range of values in our measurements. And that's actually a mistake here. That should say low precision because the, our values vary from each trial. Here's an example of a dartboard. We throw these darts kind of wildly. Um, that's, that's very imprecise. Uh, here we have three trials. 97.8, 93.9, 95 grams. These are going to be accurate measurements because if we take an average, that average is going to be very close to the true value, at least relatively accurate. However, these are not precise because they do vary uh, a good amount by a few grams um, in each trial. So they're not very repeatable. And not only that, the measurements are improperly read. We're not using the correct number of sig figs in any of these measurements. There should be four sig figs on all of these measurements. Here, our scale is not teared or zero, so we have very low accuracy again. We're reading 45.9 approximately, when it should be 95.9. Um, however, these are very precise measurements because they're very repeatable. Even though the true value or the average of the trials is far from the true value, they are consistent. And here we have what we want, 95.89, 95.85, 95.87 grams. Scale is teared correctly. We're getting measurements that are close to the true value. We have the correct number of sig figs based on our instrument right here. And, uh, and, and yeah, that's it. Oh, our measurements are consistent. Um, if we, uh, the difference between each of these trials is very small, so these are accurate and precise. Uh, well, that's that. Uh, there's the lecture on the end of the PowerPoint. Bye.